Hello everyone. So thank you for joining our webinar here. Uh, so my name is Dominic and I'm responsible for business growth development here for Push Push Go. And I'd like to introduce you here to my colleague Magda and she's the customer success manager and our tech, tech expert here. Hello everyone. So to make sure that our transmission goes correctly, we'll turn off the camera now and then we'll proceed with the presentation, okay? Okay, so once again, hello everyone and welcome to the webinar. So I'd like to tell you about the layout of our presentation. So it's going to last 45 minutes, so 30 minutes of the presentation and then 15 minutes of Q&A at the end. So you can type any questions you have in the chat box at any time. And then at the end of the 15 minutes, uh, Magda here will answer your questions accordingly. Okay. So here's the layout of our presentation. So it's divided into four sections. So for section one, we have creation of tags. Section two, where you can find them. Three, how to utilize them. And four, how to use them in the most favorable way. So for those who may not know what tags are, they are a way of marking the behavior of a given subscriber. These marks can be many things, such as your operating system, device you are using, the country of location, band and car, what item may be bought, and so on. First, we must create them. Then once we have them, we can use them to target our audience. So let's get started with creating the tags. So I'd like to tell you here that they are completely safe and we are GDPR compliant here. So we configure everything for you in this case, but this is for your informational purposes. So there are two methods, using selectors and automation. With selectors, we need a basic understanding of HTML. We can create a large amount of tags and then name them, and the name of them will be taken directly from the page, which is also known as dynamic tagging. With automation, you do not need to know uh, about HTML. You can make up your own name for the tag. This allows you to investigate the behavior of your subscriber, such as when your site is being visited. And this is not an either or approach. You can use both simultaneously. What exactly are selectors? The name is hand in hand with HTML. They are made from the source of the website. So we can choose the element that we wish to track. And that is uh, called either an ID or a class. So some examples of this are checking the value of the cart, seeing if our given element has been clicked, marking our user dependent on which categories were used. So first, we need to find where the category names appears on the site. When the selector is created on the basis of class, we place a period or a dot before the text. If it is made on the basis of an ID, we put a pound sign before the text. So here are the steps to create selectors in our panel. So first you must log into the application, then you click on selectors, and then you click on new selector and you're off. Once created, the selector will see what happens with your element, and this information is available in the panel. This allows us to know which element is clicked by our subscriber. And in the picture, uh, you can see that we are able here to set how uh, our selector should be used, what it should do. Uh, I also would like to mention about the alternative way of uh, creating tags. It's um, possible by wizard, what is also uh, available in uh, selector staff. Uh, but uh, you don't have to worry about that. It's completely on our app. So automated marketing is used to get activities into motion, which will occur automatically, hence the word automatic in the name. This performance is possible due to one out of four triggers, start of the session, the end of the session, subscription to the service, and then unsubscription from the service. In order to have this work, the user must exit the site. So here you have steps to make a new automation in our panel. So first, you go to Automation tab and click on New Automation. 
Then as a trigger, we use the end of the session. And then the next step is to set the condition. And lastly, we can tag our subscriber based on specific behavior, selecting the next action step. So where are these tags? Where can we find them? And uh, if you enter the subscriber tab and click filter by tag, you are able to see all the tags that uh, are assigned to your subscribers. Next to each tag, you are able to see the small number, which uh, just uh, accords to how many people have this tag. Okay, so next to each subscriber, you can see the tags, which were assigned based on the user's behavior. And here in this example, you can see that this user was interested in a blog. So we can get lost with all these tags everywhere, but there is a solution to that, obviously. Using tag labels, we can segregate them to our liking. Yes, and here we may um, determine if those tags should append or rewrite. If we click append, it means that all the tags will uh, be still visible on our, uh, in our application in subscriber tab. So for example, when uh, the subscriber visits the blog and then uh, visit the uh, website contact, for example, he will have two tags, the content and the blog. But if uh, I choose the rewrite uh, behavior, only the last one uh, will uh, be saved there. So only, for example, contact will be uh, visible. Okay, so we can see the group of tags that interest us at any given moment by selecting, let's say you're trying to look at clothes or really any other category that you're interested in. So we're on to section three, and this is how we can utilize these tags. Tags may be used for informational purposes, like how many people have bought a product, and this can be compared with Google Analytics. We can use them by targeting the audience by sending these personalized campaigns. They can be used in manual and automated campaigns. Uh, in manual campaigns, um, we have two types of uh, push. It's uh, just a simple, once created and once sent, and it's named push. And the second one is ABX test push. So it's uh, for sending a different um, types of one campaign and uh, to check which one uh, has the highest click rate. This one, the winner campaign, will be sent to the rest of our base. In the push uh, type, uh, the targeting step uh, is uh, on the second place and uh, in ABX test push is just the fourth uh, step. And we are, uh, we don't have to um, tag to only tag only one group, send to push to only one tag, but because uh, we may also uh, choose uh, several uh, groups of tag. Okay, so here we can see that you may select certain tags or exclude them. So you have a bunch of these tags that you can see, and then you can choose which ones to look at. And then in the same token, you're excluding the other ones. So it looks a little different in automation. Once you click on the automation tab, you go to new automation. You define which tags you want to use in the conditions to send these campaigns. So an example here would be, you want to send messages about your entries to your blog periodically, but only to people who read this certain blog. And the trigger here would be the end of the session. And uh, here we can see how does it looks, uh, how we create here the scenario. Uh, so it's based on the condition where we may define uh, to whom we wish to send our uh, notification. And then our next step is uh, push. It's uh, visible by a small icon bell. And here is just the example of the web push, uh, which is uh, targeted only to people interested in blog content. So now we have made it to the last section, section four, and it's about how to effectively use these tags that we mentioned. So it is super easy and very useful to monitor the effectiveness of the subscription form. 
So let's say that we change the content of the form every week or whatever time frame that you want to use. By doing this, we are able to see which form gives you the highest subscription rate. The trigger here is signing up for the notifications. Let's say the subscriber is not visiting the site regularly. We can send them a push, get their attention, and bring them back by creating a scenario where the system sees that the user has not been active for X amount of time. To make it even more effective, we can use tags such as last seen, products, the URL address, and last click categories. So basically, the more that we personalize these campaigns, the higher the click through rate is. And you can also divide the subscribers as loyal and disloyal users. If the subscriber visits the site regularly, we can reward them with special pushes with promotion codes or discounts or whatever else you may have in mind. You can mark these visitors visited in the last X amount of time. So now we have abandoned baskets, which is everyone's nightmare, but there's still hope. We can see who abandoned the cart, when they did so, and how often they do it. With this, you can react accordingly to send these personalized pushes. There are many variables that can come into play to decide what kind of message to send, depending on the value of the cart or when the transaction did not go through. Cheaters can be marked as constantly abandoning that try to force such messages to be sent to them. Rich pushes allow us to show a bigger visual and less text on the message, and they only work for Chrome users. You may send them to Firefox and Opera browsers, but the visualization will not be available, so it is a good idea to do this separately. And now we have a welcome message, which is the perfect way to show your subscribers the benefits of allowing to receive your notifications. You can, pro you can also promote your mobile app in this way as well. So thank you very much for your attention. And now, if you have any questions, we are still waiting on the chat box. So please let us know with the questions, and then we'll read them through. And then Magda will answer them accordingly. So we'll give you a few minutes, unless we have some already in the chat box. I see uh, one which actions on website we, uh, can we uh, make tags? Could you tell something more about it? Uh, everything uh, what we are able to click uh, on the website, we may measure it by selectors. Uh, then we use uh, our automation to create a condition. If someone uh, clicked on something, uh, what, uh, where the information from the selectors appears, we may tag uh, this person. We may also tag uh, every visible thing, like um, the category of articles or product in uh, e-commerce, for example. So, for example, I may uh, tag if someone was interested in uh, dress category uh, or in shoes category. Okay, so since since I see that there are, okay, so we have more questions now. Uh, uh, yes, of course, uh, we uh, completely uh, help with creating tags. Uh, it's uh, totally on our end. You just uh, need to tell us what do you wish to follow, and we will do that for you. Okay, so we see that someone else is typing, so we'll wait for the question. I see, Ursula, that you were trying to type something. Are you still?
uh, if we upload the image that is bigger than uh, 200 bytes, uh, it won't uh, upload. So uh, the message won't be sent. Okay, so did that answer your question, Ursula? Okay, great. So if you guys may have any other questions that pop in mind in the meantime, feel free to contact us. We have our emails here, so please send us a direct message and we'll get to the bottom of your questions. So thank you very much for your attention again, and you have a great rest of your day. Thank you very much for your attention. Bye-bye.